Greetings, mortals. Stone Monk Gamer here with the Mortal Realms crew. And it's finally come my Warcry Age of Sigmar box starter set from Mini Stomp. Thanks for delivering this, guys. I've already had a chance to open it up. Uh, it is empty because I've been looking through it. Um, I also, in addition, uh, picked up the Cypher Lords over the weekend as I was waiting for the box because I just couldn't wait to start digging into something. And it's been really fun painting these. I just want to go through the core set. You've probably watched some unboxings. You've probably seen some people put this stuff together. Uh, I just want to share my excitement. What I think is uh, uh, the most exciting parts of the box, maybe in order of importance to me um, or my gaming, etc. And of course, then we're going to start with the core book. Um, the rule set, uh, the, the, the tools that it gives you to play this game out of the box, but also kind of kind of even showing some of the excitement of where this game could go. Um, at the core of every Games Workshop game is now the three ways of play. The open play, narrative play, and matched play. If you're new to an Age of Sigmar or uh, Warhammer game, essentially that means open play, as in kind of chilling with your friends, uh, beer and pretzels is the way some people talk about it. Narrative, meaning linked uh, games that tell a story, um, and maybe um, allow you to kind of grow from from one part, you know, from a start of your band and experience to the end where you've gathered and amassed more trophies and uh, treasures, etc. And then matched play, which tries to give you a more balanced, even um, kind of tournament competitive way to play. Um, all three of these ways provide uh, some really cool aspects to the game, and particularly in the Warcry core book, we're going to get some different things from it. For instance, the open play um, section is going to give us rules for Triumph and Treachery, and in the past, Triumph and Treachery has been a very um, kind of cutthroat, uh, backstabbing, negotiation, um, pleading for your life kind of game where you it's multiplayer, and you just don't know who whose side you're going to be on and when it's appropriate to kind of make those alliances or break those alliances. So that's really fun. It also is going to have some kind of hidden objective options. So kind of like twists or the object kind of kind of partway between the, the twists and the, the objectives where you personally have another way to score uh, glory points, which I think would be a fantastic add on for a narrative campaign. Now, the narrative section has narrative campaigns. It has rosters. It has a way to kind of move your um, move your warband through a story. Very excited for that. Very excited to see how that layers. Um, and in fact, I'm going to get started on uh, our first campaign locally pretty soon. Um, and then lastly, match play has a lot of, I think, options for knowing where to tweak if you feel like you need to balance uh, or make the games more symmetrical or um, something to that effect. I just think that there's a lot of tools in here for a lot of different people to play the way the way they want to play. So the core book is what I'm most excited for because of what's in it, but also perhaps what it means for the future of Warcry. And there's nothing like jumping into a game that feels like it has so much potential. Now, the next thing, because I am primarily a um, hobbyist, uh, meaning I love to paint miniatures, uh, build miniatures are the untamed beasts and the iron golems. Now, interesting when sometimes when Games Workshop puts out starter sets with miniatures, the concern is is that the initial sprues that you get are incomplete, meaning that maybe you want to wait until they come out with the individual boxes because then you'll have more weapon options, etc. Having looked at the Cipher Lords and what I do believe looking pre previews of the other warbands, these are the complete sets. These are three half sprues each. Each warband seems to kind of fit in that, that sort of way. And I think that that's a fantastic, um, you know, compact and that they are reusable. You can get, you know, you, you build more on these. Now, that means that they may not be as customizable. That may not be your thing. You may not be worried about that. Um, I will say, whereas the Cypher Lord heads, if you watched my unboxing of that, the heads are a little bit maybe harder to convert um, or find... Um, something to just easily swap. And I think they're very much designed with that kind of the design balance with their big uh, he uh, helmets and crests. Um, but I will say it looked like the Untamed Beasts, at least the 
kind of lieutenants and the and the leader are going to have a much easier time to head swap. Um, as I do th believe the same may be true of these. So that means that while you're like your planes runners might all be very similar because they're just chumps. Um, your hero, if you had multiple um, first fangs, you may be able to give them different heads and to, to, to tell them apart and create some uniqueness. So that's fantastic. Along with that are the three sprues of chaos beasts. Um, and this might seem like a small thing, but to add the element, uh, it, it kind of embodies some of the, the potential that this game has um, to both have these as uh, NPCs, the Raptor Rixes and the Furies as NPCs, a third party that could just bring a lot of mess to a, a two party game to having them as part of your uh, war band or if you need to kind of supplement or add some different kind of abilities. Um, but it also means, you know, think about um, fighting, you know, two war bands fighting a Gargant and who can take down the giant or um, some different monsters, etc. So just the idea of being able to have a, a non-player character or a non-player army uh, warband that could interfere with things like, or even out of the starter set and the Cypher Lords, this, you play the Cypher Lords as an NPC or having uh, certain abilities similar to these. So I just think it's a, a fun design space. and It'll be fun to check that out. Now, um, obviously, you know, what's been wowing everybody is the six brews of terrain. And I've already been starting uh, building my first one and in fact I'm gonna uh, do a tutorial on how to take these sprues and turn them into more terrain um, things like uh, you know those timber platforms etc so I'll show you more of that soon word of advice on these it's been around um, if you go to a website on YouTube or a channel on YouTube called blackjack legacy um, uh, there is a a I'll link in the in the description below, but there is a video on how to construct these in the way to get uh, have the terrain set up so you can have um, the most flexibility for every single one of the uh, terrain cards that's provided. Um, so go check that out. You can build this any way you want. It gives you instructions for putting them together. And if you flip a terrain card and you don't have that exact configuration, you can figure it out. There's nothing wrong with that. So. I am probably going to build this uh, to what Blackjack Legacy uh, showed just to kind of make sure I have those options. But I am excited for, you know, these coming out either either buying another starter set or getting these sprues off of somebody who has a starter set um, or um, waiting until they come out with uh, individual or, you know, uh, standalone boxes, a, a Ravaged Lands uh, version of this uh, to build any way I want. Because I think that there's just a lot of potential in customizing these and going nuts. So this is fantastic. And then obviously the rules, uh, the instructions for building everything is gonna be, uh, is really cool. Um, next excitement obviously is the use of cards, both for the abilities and the units. Um, I loved having these on the table, being able to, to add wounds to them, et cetera, um, and just having these as easy reference um, and not a ton of books or other things to have to look up to, to check these out. Uh, and then in addition, these four decks of cards that allow you to just sit down, draw cards, build the set, uh, the terrain, the way it shows you on the card and get going. These are fantastic. I'm excited uh, not only to pull these at random, but see what combinations, what combinations of these might create for some interesting scenarios that I could like pre-plan uh, for events or for, um, you know, even, um, you know, this week for our, our, our impromptu league everybody play this scenario with these uh, issues or this universal rule twist or whatnot. So these are fantastic, both as a casual way to get games started. But again, these are the roadmap for where the game could be going and how you could be setting up events and uh, even just afternoon games. Lastly, I do love that they uh, added a lot of these kind of extra things in uh, from tokens to a ruler extra plastic bag. Um, a lot of this stuff is par for the course when you're designing, uh, putting box games together and dice. I always love dice. Um, I'm not as excited because these are kind of tools that I have at my disposal already. The wound markers, again, I think they're essential for the box. 
for wounds, I think I'm probably going to stick with dice and have uh, polyhedral dice, 20-sided dice, etc., uh, to kind of mark off points on each of my um, my units, just because it's a little bit um, easier upkeep. And I did find, you know, switching between the one and the, the three on this side, one on this side, ten on this side, five on this side, flipping around and stuff was a little bit more complex than I wanted. But again, if you're going to put this out, these are essential. They do the job. Um, I just think that there's ways that I'm used to. So um, these are in the box as well. Um, I just am so excited for this game. The roots uh, of this game uh, coming out of Skirmish and this low model count. I love the story behind it being set in the eight points and, and these kind of soon to be or, or followers of chaos that don't know that they're followers of any one particular god of chaos and I, i'm not a chaos player but i am there's this gray area that they're playing in that i really enjoy and i'm looking forward to playing some of the non-chaos factions as well so if you're excited uh for war cry and you've started painting or or putting your box together or picked up some aspects of this and are starting to kind of get yourself ready then uh, you know, come find me at t on Twitter at Stone Monk Gamer. Share your stuff. Come look at my stuff, um, and we can see what we're doing. You can also join us on the mortalrealms.com forward slash discord uh, to come share with our kind of smaller hobby group, and we're comparing notes and sharing things, etc. Um, and you know, just join the the AOS Warhammer Warcry community um, and, uh, and 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 get psyched for this. Um, there's going to be a lot more coming out um, uh, all the time, um, even uh, you know some some other things in the works that I'm excited to share in the future. Um, I'm hoping my next videos have to do with terrain uh, painting and uh, using those sprues uh, to spice up kind of walkways, etc. And I hope you uh, join me and come back to see those. See you soon. <laughs>